Okay, so uh, the next talk is uh, from by Simon Pool, which I think needs no introduction. Uh, but he was telling me that uh, he has been the president of the Swiss OpenStreetMap chapter. And uh, now I'll leave you to your presentation. Thank you. Whoops. Uh, actually things go wrong starting so hi everybody when I started mapping as a relative lake coma to to open seat map in 2010 I started off with potlatch there wasn't a one at that point in time because it was the first version of potlatch and I think most people that started around that time were the same and you know, when I mapped, I just entered a key and a tag, a value, and I didn't look that up anywhere, perhaps in the wiki, but I didn't use a preset or so, even though Potlatch 1 had preset support. And now over the years, partially due to my involvement with developing Vespucci, um, I always use presets all the time. And I first thought, well, maybe, maybe that's due to, you know, there being a lot more tags now than there used to be. And actually, that is true, but it isn't so drastic. And um, I actually produced a number for the number of tags that have more than 10,000 usages in, 10, in 2010 and 2018. The anticlimax is, it was 1,500 in 2010, and it's still 1,500 in 2018. And the underlying reason for that is probably that most of them are nonsense. And so you can't actually see the change. And that would, to figure that out, you would actually have to manually chuck out everything which doesn't make sense. And I didn't do that. I was too lazy. So in the beginning, we had the Java applet. Actually, I'm not quite sure whether we had the Java applet as an editor because there's no timeline of editors over the history of OpenStreetMap. And there were a handful of other editors around, but it's impossible to tell when were they used, how long did they stay alive. A lot of them got killed off in 2009 when we changed the API to the current version. Um, so a history there is a bit murky. But the great thing, the great thing is that um, the people that wrote these editors, two of them at least are in this room, or were at least um, at this conference, and um, everybody who worked on these presets I'm going to show you is actually here at this conference. So the Java applet had something like, I don't know, 40 presets. Potlatch at one, a bit more. And Josm, late 2007, that's 180 presets. And the format that was used by Josm in 2007 is very similar to what it was uh, today. And in general, things haven't changed that much. Now, I offer a definition for a preset is a template containing suggested keys and associated values for specific real-world objects. Now, this is wrong, because for example, in JOSM, you have utility presets which just add a couple of tags and don't actually correspond to a real-world object. But I'm leaving that away right now. And the other way of putting it is that the presets bring order into chaos, perhaps. Now, there's quite a few of preset systems around. I have to say, as a developer, this is mainly a result of rampant, not invented here syndrome. If you, yeah, I'm pointing out here, um, one of the things to note is that between JOSM and ID, Potlatch 2, you have an order of magnitude difference in current edits, then another order of magnitude to the group of these four editors, 
an awesome AND is actually, even though it has a fairly extensive preset system, another order of magnitude smaller. So we're talking about hundreds of millions here, tens of millions here, millions here, and here we're around about 100,000. And these systems are all very similar. That's why I say, you know, not invented here. It's really technically not very different. So, but do presets matter? And I have to prefix this section with a remark. Because presets are so strongly integrated into ID, all the examples actually show things that happened with ID. Because there's no way you can get around the presets there. There have been errors in JOSM which have been around for a decade, but they've just not had such a large effect. Huh, it's not showing the graph for some reason. That is not good. Hmm. Not quite sure why this is the case. Can't show you thing, anything there in that case. So getting to the interesting part in any case. The, what I did here was convert ID presets to JOSM format. I spent a long time looking at stuff like this, which that produced can see that there are a couple of funny values in there. There, something there. And I always said, oh, that can't be. But if you actually look, hmm, I'm trying to fix this. I'm not quite sure what's, what's going on. Yeah, let's go out. In, so let's see. No, not showing the slide, and it's just SVG. And, and if you accept the presentation, mode. okay, I can try. Does it, does it work? Let's see. Let go back, 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 back. No, it's not showing. Technical problems. Okay. Then I'll just do it without that. No problem. Anyway, so what I did was convert ID presets to JOSM format. And when I did that, I expanded the list of values for top level objects. So imagine you have a preset for buildings. And you could have a separate preset for building residential, building industrial, and so on. But you know, that would mean that you'd have 100 different presets. So typically, people combine presets into um, drop-down lists. And so what I did here is expand these. Yeah, sure. SVG as well, that's the funny thing. Um, 
can just go around it. Funny, of course, we're there. Yeah. In the preview, but not there. Okay. I don't think there's any point in trying to fix the graphs. We'll just go to the numbers. Okay, so what I did was expand these top-level object keys. And then expand the first-level, sub-level keys. So, for example, natural water, I would expand the water values. And this is what came out. And we have a clear winner here. ID has roughly 2,000 items. JOSM a bit behind that. And I actually ran the same program on those JOSM presets from 2007, which gave me 180 items. And Vespucci is a bit better than JOSM, but that's no surprise because I've put quite a lot of work into it. So that's a win for ID. Well, maybe not. Because as I said, ID pulls values and keys from tag info. So if you don't do that, you get substantially lower numbers, roughly half. And so, you know, you could argue that this violates the curated part of presets. And when you're using ID, you don't actually know that this is not something that somebody has, has looked at. And so I say, that's a bit problematic. But the other problem here is that, OK, ID has 2,000 presets. Do they actually matter? And is this perhaps just, OK, mine's longer than yours? And what you get out of this program I wrote to, to make that is a big, big spreadsheet with tags and which ones are which um, preset, but that is really all a quantitative measurement, not a really qualitative measurement. So what I did is I had this idea, let's compare this to a reference. And I generated this fairly sim uh, si simple. I iterated over all object keys, we'll get to that in a second, and generated tags for all values that are used more than 500 times in the database and did something similar for the sub keys. And then I removed rubbish, which does quite a fair bit. Now, what is an object key? Some of you probably know that I'm in the licensed working group and we published this collective database guideline and we actually tried to define what that is. And um, yeah, it's a long winded thing, but it points to the map features pa page in the wiki. And if you actually go there, you'll get this list of top level keys. And I think, you know, most of us would agree these are all top level keys. Um, sport is a bit funny because sport is not really a top level key. It's actually an attribute which you apply to other objects. And um, the question is, naturally, are these all? And for the people that were in the talk by Paul just before this, you would notice that there's one missing. Which one is that? Advertising is missing. Any more suggestions what's missing? Exactly. Hmm? Uh, no, that's a boundary. That's actually uh, a, a value for boundary, not a key. Hmm? Yes. Uh, that's, that's not a top-level key. 
Okay, there are a couple of more in any case. And um, so this is the list that I curated. Symmetry, interesting enough. There's one in ID which I don't actually have here. That's allotment equals plot. That's uh, one of these oddities. Um, but golf is, for example, clearly a top level key, attraction, playground, pipeline, van cover, and so on. And so, generated this list, and it contains roughly 1,200 top level tags and 2,300 tag combinations. Now, you have to realize that this 500 occurrences, 500 slash 100 occurrences, occurrences criteria is relative rough. This is stuff which is used a lot. So you would expect a default preset to contain it. Agreed? I did actually produce a version of this where I relaxed the constraints a bit and said everything that has a wiki page belongs in this as well and you'll get a thousand more entries. And luckily that's not a particularly good idea because people have started adding wiki pages for stuff that's not documented, in the sense that they simply add a, a stub, which doesn't actually contain any information, except that it's not documented. So not so good criteria. So I left it as it is. And this shows something interesting. You can see ID with tag info has a bit better coverage but the differences are smaller. And the most notable thing is even ID only has half of the commonly used tag combinations as presets. And the question actually is, where are those missing tags, uh, missing presets? So if you look, whoops back one. This is a representation of the tags in, in the ID preset. And you can see, as expected, amenities large, shop is large, that's leisure, land use, office, and so on. So this is essentially preset items pro, per top level tag. Now if you compare that with the reference data set, you can actually see that there's one very big difference, and that is man-made. And there are actually multiple hundred of man-made tags in use with occurrences in the thousands and thousands of objects that do not turn up in the presets. So, you know, we're obviously being rather selective about what we have there. Now, generating this reference data set had a bit of problems. Um, I assumed classical OSM tagging. So top level key equals value and the value with sub value. Classical example, shop equals close, close has two values. Jochen will hate me for this, but you know, it is uh, quite common. There's new OSM tagging, where value lists are essentially transformed into individual items. This is one which is actually fairly in use. And essentially, these are modeled in the presets as checkboxes. And we have even newer OSM tagging, where more of the values are moved into key space. And that actually is a problem for somebody writing a preset. It's also a data retrieval uh, problem, but that's outside of the scope of the talk. So I had a very funny graph here, which you can't see. And you know this expands further. And this is one reason why the, the key number is so much higher than it used to be, because we're moving values into key space. And we're losing the semantic information. There's no real way that you can 
generate a reasonable preset for this kind of stuff. And this is not just imagined. There would be a graph here which shows that, that this actually turns up in tag info. And one of the questions is naturally, okay, can we perhaps refine things and, and improve tag info use in these presets? The good thing about tag info is that it reflects actual use. It reduces work for the developers. It allows you to discover keys that you don't know about. But the problematic side, which I already mentioned, is it breaks the curated assumption. And there's limited context for that you can give in these queries. So one of the examples that you haven't seen now is land use equals construction. Construction is used as a sub tag for buildings, for highways, and so on. And uh, you will get all the same values mashed up together. So one thing which I did for um, Vespucci, finishing off now, is actually generate completely automatic generated presets. And it works fairly well. And unlikely, I can't see, show you the results. But um, anybody who has Vespucci can try it out, at least the US version. Um, essentially, it gives you a rough preset that you can actually start on and refine per hand. So there are lots of other things that are interesting about presets. You know, naming of them, is the naming the same all over the place? Depth, how detailed is the tagging? Diversity, as I said, we only cover half of the actual objects that are mapped in OSM with presets. Is there any bias there? So these are things that we could do in a talk, which actually sl showed graphs. So coming to the end, I want to thank Jochen, Martin, and Roland for their tools and to Tom for letting me hammer tag info for two weeks. So, thank you. Sorry that we don't have the... Well. So, do we have any questions? Do you have any, any idea how about how much influence the, the presets have on actual mapping behavior? Well, that's the graphs that you didn't see. Um, and and, and it's, it's really totally obvious. Um, one of the examples I had was sculptor versus sculptor. Um, that was well, simply a typo in a preset. And you can see can really see usage of the typo going up, error being fixed in the preset, and it flattening out. And, and it's very, at least for, for ID, where you can't really get around the, the presets, it is very clear. Anything we put in the presets reflects itself in the data. Christian? Okay, for the, for the man-made problems, so when I was looking into the stuff, uh, there was a lot of domain-specific stuff in there, especially for electrical um, uh, networks and this stuff. So the interesting question is, should this actually go into presets, or is it better that it is outside? What do you think about this? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, there are really hundreds of man-made tags which uh, are not reflected in the presets. And some of them are probably very special, special purpose, but um, there are lots of which are essentially OK. So uh, I, I just think it's, it's something which we haven't so focused on. People have been focusing on shops, on amenities, on leisure tags, and stuff like that. And the man-made stuff has been a bit of a you know, uh, not so important. There are not here also. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's here. there, it's there, but it's not. 
Hi. Uh, it doesn't show the large version. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody broke my SVGs, I think. That is the problem. <laughs> Might be Google. Because if you see the preview, there are. If, yeah. you, if you move, uh, if, you, if you scroll faster, you can see. But you have the key inside your computer? Yeah, yeah. Can you probably show this uh, where you have? Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to say that um, during lunch you are invited to look at the bookable space board to see if you want to join one of the group discussion. Uh, they are in front of the uh, registration desk. Then again, there is the group photo after lunch at 2 o'clock in the central cloister there. And there is also a job notice board at the uh, yeah a community notice board for job offers at the info point, always at the registration desk. So yeah, doing something. <laughs> Okay, so if I can move it over. Ha! Huh. So I can. <laughs> so, okay, one graph at least. This is the actual the sculptor versus sculptor problem, and you can see exactly what I say. So um, this was going up like mad. It's actually an ID preset. And I actually told Brian about the typo here. You can see which and the correct version going up. Errors are very good markers, this kind of thing. And there are a couple of examples. Yeah. There is one last question. Yeah. Uh, 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 the, the presets are very useful for novice editors, but I don't know if you no uh, easy way to make a preset of tags, for example, for a mapping party to a specific uh, team like uh, mobility or trees or something like that. But for me, like organized mapping party is very difficult to, to find the novice people or the people that never use OpenStreetMap to put or to find the exact tags, yeah? yeah. Uh that's one reason why I think, you know, JOSM allows additional presets and there's a hundred or so specialized stuff. That, that's somewhat missing the point because that is actually only for people that know that these things exist. And that's why I'm for more inclusive default presets. And that's why, for example, Vespucci has a lot of stuff which is in separate presets for JOSM actually integrated in the default preset and and I think I think the, the the case with advertising is is clear you know you you don't actually know that there's tagging for that object if you're a, a newbie and if it's not in the preset you're not going to be able to find it without knowing okay I have to go to the wiki and so on and so forth that's why I, I argue for for more stuff in the default presets. Uh, let's thank Simon and um, just a note, I'll put a version of the talk with the graphs online. See you after lunch. <laughs>